New iPhones are coming soon. What's Apple got up its sleeves? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and welcome to Gadget Match. In a little tryst I'd like to call smartphone wars, there are two main contenders. In one corner, from Korea, you have Samsung, the world's largest smartphone manufacturer. And on the other, from the USA, you have Apple, the inventor of the smartphone. Well, at least the smartphone that we know today. Last August 13, Samsung laid down the gauntlet with two phablets, the super sexy dual edge screen S6 Edge Plus and the stylus toting Note 5, thus completing its 2015 flagship lineup. So what's next for Apple? We'll find out soon. Sources have it, the next iPhone event takes place on September 9th in San Francisco, the same date it chose for last year's unveiling. But while we wait, the question that seems that everybody wants answered is, what will the new iPhone be called? iPhone 6S or iPhone 7? Apple seems to have already set a precedent. Every other year is an iterative update. Following the iPhone 3G in 2008 came the 3GS, the 4, the 4S, the 5, 5S, and the 6. So most logically, this year we can expect to see the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. Both phones are expected to go on sale on September 18th. Because this year is the S year, then design and form factor shouldn't change much either. Apart from minor changes that may include an increase in thickness, the 2015 phones should look pretty much like this. Oh, but there will be a new color added to the mix of gray, gold, and silver. Pink! Well, rose gold actually. Some claim it will look like this. But if the rose gold Apple Watch is any indicator, then it could look closer to this. But for now, you can only speculate. Just like all the other major flagship smartphones this year, expect iterative spec upgrades. Nothing earth shattering. Here's the spec sheet of last year's iPhones. And this is how the new phones are expected to compare. As you can see, both models will stay 4.7 and 5.5 inches respectively. Notice a processor bump, A8 to A9. More RAM up from one to two gigabytes. In typical Apple fashion, none of these are really competitive when compared to this year's crop of flagship smartphones. But for Apple, it's really never been about specs, but about the overall experience. If there is one spec bump worth looking into, it has to do with the camera. This year, we may see the biggest camera upgrade in iPhone history. From 8 megapixels, which Apple hasn't changed since the iPhone 4S way back in 2013, it appears Apple is putting a 12 megapixel camera on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. Recently, Apple acquired a company called Linx that specializes in smartphone camera modules that can shoot like DSLRs using tech called multiple aperture arrays. Sounds Greek to me, but whatever the case, expect to see dramatic improvements in the iPhone's already good camera. Oh, and two years after we first saw it on a smartphone, 4K video is said to finally make it to an iPhone. I'm sure you also want to know about battery life. Usually until an iPhone ships and is torn apart, we won't really know what the capacity is like. Reports have it, battery improvements will come from more power-efficient hardware, not necessarily higher capacity batteries. Everybody is talking about Force Touch, display technology that debuted on the Apple Watch. Force Touch can differentiate between a tap and a deep press and provides haptic feedback that mimics the sensation felt when you click on a trackpad, for instance. You're tapping on glass, but you're feeling a response. And depending on how hard you press, you're triggering a whole range of actions. Apple also hopes to stop Bendgate once and for all, using the same 7000 series aluminum found on the Apple Watch. This stronger aluminum shell, according to this video by Unbox Therapy Ben, starting only at a force of 80 kilos. Touch ID, the fingerprint scanning technology built into the home button, is also getting some improvements that have to do with a higher Apple Pay related security. And that's everything you can expect on the next iPhone. Based on what you've heard, based on those new features and improvements, is it reason enough for you to want to upgrade? 
Personally, I love it if Apple would give us uncrippled NFC support, if they would give us wireless charging and the new fast charging that we've seen on new Samsung smartphones of late. And please, Apple, it's time to bump up your entry-level memory or entry-level storage to 32 gigabytes. What about you? What would you like to see on the next iPhone? Let us know in the comments section below. Keep those thumbs up coming and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to this channel and like our Facebook page and follow Gadget Match elsewhere on social media. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for jumping by.